when I walk outside and I listen. I can feel in every ounce of my being that I am part of the whole that is nature. but we're all part of all of it. And when you look at nature, it's obvious that there is divine intelligence. Then whether that divine intelligence, you call it science or you call it God, I just wanna invite us to be present to the miracles that this earth is constantly offering us. I'm Molly Englehart, plant-based chef and regenerative farmer. Welcome to my farm. Hello, hello, hello. So our heart farm is mostly nestled in this beautiful valley along the Sespe Creek. I live here with my family. <laughs> my super hardworking husband, Elias. Eat your salad, little girl. <laughs> my beautiful adult son, Osmar, my curious son, Rio, Luna, my little princess, Soul, my warrior, and my newest baby, Estrella. Hello, hello, hello. I live here with my extended family. They help us work the land. Hello, hello, oh. hello. We all have a common desire to connect with the land grow healthy food, create this beautiful, healthy soil, and just be together. And we feel so grateful to get to do this every day. I think I always wanted to have a farm on some level. Food and farming has always been a huge part of my life. I grew up on 27 acres in upstate New York. My dad grew apples. My mom made dresses and sold them at the farmer's market. I was vegan, vegetarian my whole life. I even opened several vegan restaurants. LA Times Today checked out this popular vegan restaurant, Sage. Once she had the restaurants, it was certainly like, it only makes sense that she would want to close the loop, whether it's, you know, it's not even just sourcing, for the restaurants, it's also, well, what are we going to do with all the scraps, all the food waste? Food waste is going to end up in the landfill. And what is the biggest cause of methane problem in the world? You think it's cow farts, but you're wrong. It's food in our landfill. So every day, compost gets bought from the restaurant. And so what we do is we bring it back here to the farm. This broccoli, this broccoli is going to be turned into soil to grow more broccoli instead of methane in the landfill. I love my worms. They're like pets and you gotta feed them compost scraps. The worms are turning it into food scraps into this a beautiful soil very, very quickly. And this makes all the microbes and everything the soil needs. And then you feed that right out into the irrigation line. That was also part of what led me to wanting to have my own farm, wanting to know really what was going into the food and then what was going into the soil, which would then be going into the food that I was putting on my plates and serving thousands of people a day. I'm Natalie Basha and I'm on a farm in Fillmore, California, where a Los Angeles couple moved here and they're practicing regenerative agriculture on their farm. Okay, we ready? Um, when we <laughs> bought this place in three years ago, there was nothing here except for these few big avocado trees that you see right here, and everything else was just empty desert dirt. The soil health was so bad here. We used to not even be able to grow broccoli, and we couldn't even grow cabbage because the aphids would just kill it plant fennel with all of our brassicas. It's a really good insectary. We don't use any chemicals here, but the fennel keeps the bugs away, so we don't have to spray anything. The fennel came out really beautifully here, and you can see there's almost no aphids on any of the broccoli. 
we have over 250 things on our organic certification. Then you can see broccoli that's just finished between young avocados. And you can see here's jalapenos and sunflowers growing in here in the middle. There's watermelons growing. The regenerative farming, in my opinion, is the most natural way to farm. You're not working against nature, whereas a lot of agriculture, you, you're trying to manipulate nature to work to your advantage without any regard for how nature actually works. There's huge swaths of land that we could bring back to fertility by letting hooved animals graze. Um, and we could accelerate nature's own devices that are perfect. We're gonna go right next door so you can see how we're using the, the pigs and the chickens and the ducks in the orchards to deal with the snails and the weeds and for fertilizing. The snails are very much invasive in this area. People actually brought them to eat escargot and they became an invasive species and they love the citrus trees. So the ducks also love escargot. So the ducks are gonna come in and eat all of the snails. <laughs> We've built up healthy soil, and that's really allowed us to be able to grow cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli on the farm, which we couldn't grow before. And in just three years, we took what just looked like rocks and sand and made it into this beautiful place with every inch of it covered with vegetation. When I first got the farm, I definitely didn't know what I was in for. The first year was mostly just failure after failure. There was so many hardships. Last year when it got over 100, trees were completely burned and you could smell the smell of burning avocados in the air. And this is what we were trying to avoid. And this was this avocado tree is pretty full of leaves. Here's the, the skeleton of it. So you can see the avocados for next year's crop are just shriveled up and fell onto the ground here. And you can see the damage to the um, leaves of this avocado. The trees literally went from green and fine to paper and just disintegrate in your hands in a few hours. because it was hot and it was windy and it was just like having a confection oven just when it's 119, 120 degrees it is just not compatible with life. We never harvested this. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. But in each hardship, there was a learning. We've left a lot of plant matter around. There's cover crops and there's weeds and there's biodiversity of plants. And we're hoping that all of those plants, they aspirate and they breathe off moisture that hits the other plants. These trees are together and they're keeping each other cool and they're keeping each other safe from the sun that can be very harmful. And as the planet heats up, I think it's gonna be more and more important to create these microclimates and to do this high density planting. There is a crisis for humanity on the planet right now. The fact is, it's hotter than it's ever been, and it's drier than it's ever been. And so we have to look at what we're doing in the face of weather being this way. There is such convincing evidence that the problem is we don't have the carbon in the soil where it belongs, we have it in the atmosphere. Drawing down carbon with the natural cycle of life, photosynthesizing and drawing carbon into the ground, into the roots of the plants, into the soil. This is how Mother Earth has healed herself every single time. Every day, every week that I see the soil, I see the healthy food, I see the difference. I'm just like, this is a possibility. Like literally partnering with animals, partnering with plants to draw down carbon. It's a simple solution. <laughs> <laughs> One down, 20 to go. Okay, I'm done. So 
Some people wonder why I'm doing this, and to me it's obvious. Look at my children. I want them to have water they can drink, food they can eat, and have their own family. And the path we are on right now, all of that is at risk for them. And this is how we bring the earth back into balance. It's in our hands. It's as simple as us partnering with nature to do what nature is doing all the time. You are the one that you've been waiting for. So go out and be your hero.